This is the Dice Tower. This is our live Q&A. It is September 12th, 2016. It is 9 p.m. at night. Now, a reason I know a lot of people are going to tune in tonight is because uh, we're announcing the uh, big contest winner. And so we're going to do that in a few minutes. And the reason I'm not going to do it right away at the beginning is because, you know, sometimes people come to these things and start to get here a little late. So, um... Just uh, before we get to the contest winner, let me do a couple recaps of things that are going on here at the Dice Tower. Uh, first of all, I had my birthday last week. Thank you to everybody who sent me um, nice wishes on Facebook and one kind listener. I got um, a book, um, a card to go see movies, and this hat from a listener. So this is a cool hat. It's a purple uh, wide-brimmed fedora. Really do like this one a lot. So you'll probably be seeing me wear this one quite often. It's pretty cool. So thank you. Um, I am starting the early process of looking to move the dice tower out of my house. It's an expensive process. I had hoped to offset the expenses for it in a specific way and that that way did not work out. Um, but, uh, I am going to, I am looking into it. So there's a lot of different things. We want to make sure we're in a safe area where we're at. We want to make sure we have a place where we can set up. We want to set up two rooms, basically. One as an office room and one as a recording room where we can, so that way we can be recording 24 hours, not 24 hours, but you know what I mean? All day long, one person can be in there recording and setting up and then the next person, and we can also leave a lot of the audio equipment just set up so that we don't have to set it up and take it down and the camera set up and things like that. Uh, so that's coming and going and things like that. Um, I, I, it might not happen in 2017, but I am going to be talking to a retailer, some more, uh, retailer, a realtor, some more as time goes by. Um, so there's that. I went to the zoo today and recorded the first 40 entries in my top 100 games of all time. I would have recorded more, but it was extremely hot and it took, takes a really long time to record these things. Also, people keep stopping and staring and wondering what I'm doing. And it's okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably go to the zoo again next week and do the same thing. Finally, if you are in Connecticut or anywhere near Connecticut, please come say hi to us at the Portal Game Store in Manchester this coming Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday up to around 2 or 3 o'clock. We'd love to say hi to at least. I can't promise a game with everybody, but we'd love to say hi. Um, so, let's see here. I'm not going to answer questions yet, although I will get to that in a second. But I think that we have now gone on a few minutes, so we are going to do the contest. Now, let me explain how the contest worked. We have a lot of different podcasts in the Dice Tower Network, including um, Board Game Breakfast and Board Game Blender from the video shows, uh, run a contest. And each contest had different ways for there to be a winner. Each of those winners is going to get a $50 gift certificate from Cool Stuff. But one of those winners is going to get a $1,000 gift certificate. So we're going to announce that now. We're going to roll for it live so that you know it's not set up or anything. So what... I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the list of winners in, in just a second, and then we're going to roll for it, okay? So, here we go. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. All right, so let me see if we can get a good shot here. All right, so here's my little notebook. And this is not the best, but I bet we can prop this up. Let's use this love letter box. Make it good for something. All right. So here are all the different winners from the different podcasts. And I, my apologies if I have a name wrong for whatever reason. Blue Peg, Pink Peg, Craig Murphy, Geek All-Stars, Tracy Weiland, Anonymous Board Game Podcast, Paul Panic, Ludology, Dan Pango, The Game Pit, Megan Heidbrand, Out of Game Podcast, Kevin Chaves, Board Game Blender, Sarah Keeling, Rolling Dice and Taking Names, Brian Winner, Start Space Podcast, Eddie Campos, Four Corners, Dan Valencia, Boards and Swords, Christopher Brim, Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast, Anna Maholland. The we did a, we gave a winner out at our live show at Gen Con, and that was Michelle Pomisano. Board Games Insider, Paul Gates, the Dice Tower Podcast, Nick um, Tolopka, the D6 Generation, Neil Ng, and Board Game Breakfast, which I'm announcing for the first time here, John Messenger. Now, what we're gonna do here is we have 17. Now there's a possibility that I've missed the podcast. It's possible that there's a podcast that has a winner or a contest I don't know about. So that podcast then becomes 18. And we do this because 
just in case I've missed one. And I happen to have an 18-sided die here. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this die, but because one roll is a little, eh, eh, you know, you have to, the first number to get rolled twice is the big winner. So I hope that makes sense. So you have to get, you have to get rolled twice to win. So you ready? Here we go. And the first roll is a seven. So I'm going to circle seven. If we hit a circled number, so Board Game Blender, Sarah Keeling. The next number is, whoo, it was almost seven again. Eleven, Boards and Swords. All right, let's roll it again. A 17, Board Game Breakfast, John Messenger. Yeah! Okay, okay, we got to do this through a dice tower because this is, you know. Here we go. Dropping it through a dice tower. Seven again! Wow! I can't believe Board Game Blender has beat Board Game Breakfast and all the other podcasts. Sarah Keeling, congratulations. You just won a $1,000 gift certificate to Cool Stuff. I will be contacting all the winners through email. If you don't hear from me within, say, three days and you're one of these winners, then please contact me. But I'll be sending you your codes. We want to thank Cool Stuff for doing this, uh, for setting this up. We really appreciate that. And uh, I want to thank all different podcasts and different people for running this for us. Let's see, am I still in here? I am. All right. Well, that's that. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's problematic when you see these contests because it's kind of like watching the lottery, I guess. You know, there's always so many people who can win. But it is what it is. Um, and... Uh, someone said that's the first time I've seen a dice tower using a dice tower. We actually use dice towers occasionally. I actually use dice towers more than anyone else. And I'll be like, all right, let's use a dice tower. It's like when there's a critical role, you got to use a dice tower. So that's the way that goes. Um, so let's get started on questions. Do you think Games Workshop will allow another board game publisher the license to make board games with their themes? Scuttlebutt is, is that Games Workshop is already seeking out a board game publisher to work with to license their games. I don't know if that's true exactly, but it is. Wouldn't that be hilarious if like Kuhlman or not got it? I don't think they would be looking to do that though. But you never know who might pick it up. So, um, I got some cool games in the mail today that I did not expect to get. Um, one of them was called Theamaki. Basically, it's a game from the people who made the big giant Cthulhu Wars game, but this one's a smaller card game about different gods from different pantheons fighting. And I also got a Masters of Orion board game. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I hope it's cool. We'll find out. It was totally rigged. It would not be rigged. If it was rigged, it would be a Dice Tower person who'd win our board game breakfast. All right, what's my favorite dungeon crawler? Descent. Uh, let's see. Now, if you've already asked a question and it was after the die, it was before the die rolling, you probably should ask it again. I know we don't say ask questions multiple times, but I'm not going to go back up there and look at those. I'm starting from right after the, the die rolls. Um, who is your favorite of the Three Stooges? Well, as a kid, it was, it was obviously Curly, right? As time has come by and I work with kids and people, I'm starting to feel more of an affinity to Mo. Uh, if you watch the, the made-for-TV movie, um, with the different characters, and I, I, I forget what it was called. It was like a bio, biography of the Three Stooges. I really like the Mo character the, because I liked the, his outside persona. But um, inside the Three Stooges character, probably Mo um, still, though. Do you prefer Catacombs, Pitch Car, or Flick 'em Up? Well, I guess it's not too much spoilers to say all three of those are in my top 100. So I think just watch my top 100. It's coming out soon, and you'll see the order that those three show up in. Do you know anything about the release dates for the reprinted GIF series, which doesn't have Yinchin? Um, I believe, I, I thought they were releasing some of them at Essen. I might be wrong on that, but that's what I thought was happening. Um... What's your second pick for restoration games? I guess you mean after um, after the Fireball Island. Oh, there was a couple other games in there that I um, 
I my I have I've made many recommendations to them that weren't on their list. So there's some uh, there's some choices there that I thought were more interesting than anything they had. But there's a lot of games there that I was very intrigued with. Probably um, this game is bonkers because I love to see that one done with a Euro game style. How was your birthday? Was the shrimp everything you dreamed it to be? Well, my birthday was was frankly okay, right? Um, it, I wasn't feeling well for most of the day, and then so I slept all morning long, and which is, I guess, something I very rarely do anyway. And then uh, my wife and I went down to the Keys. We were going to go to the Fish House, which is an amazing restaurant. If you're ever in Key Largo, the Fish House is just amazing. But it was closed, um, and it has a sister restaurant that didn't open till 5, and we were there at 2, and I said, ah, let's find something else. And the problem with the Keys is there are so many amazing restaurants down there, but you're like, oh, which one to go to? So we kept driving until we got to Isla Mirada, uh, where there was another restaurant I knew that I, that I liked, and uh, it was a fish company. But I got there, and I was like, I don't know. We had passed a place called the Shrimp Shack, and it sounded really good. And that one, uh, after we went there, we found out that that one uh, Food Channel or whoever, whatever show, that guy with the spiky hair, the, the guy, his name is Guy, um, he had gone there. So we went and, and got just several cool appetizers, and my wife got shrimp and grits, and I got some fish. It was mahi-mahi and crusted in almonds, but I got shrimp as the appetizer. And then, of course, we went and, oh, they, they gave me a free piece of key lime pie because it was my birthday. And it was amazing. And then we went and bought more key lime pie because um, why would you not? At the key lime pie factory, which makes also amazing key lime pie. Then I came back home and worked. <laughs> um, so that was my birthday. How much is Game of Thrones, the Iron Throne, like Cosmic Encounter? Is it basically just a different theme and setting? Are you reviewing it soon? Well, I don't have it yet, so no, I'm not reviewing it soon. It's like Cosmic Encounter in many ways, but there's... You have these different characters, and you will attack... It's kind of like if you're Cosmic Encounter, but you have four characters, and each of those characters has a specific power. So it's not like you have an overall power. You have a power with each of your characters. You have a main leader... Um, but you then have four other characters and then you like send a character out to go fight somebody else and then you ask other and they'll send out characters and when you have characters in a battle then you can use special cards for them. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of similarities obviously to Cosmic Encounter but there's also a lot of differences. I, it's not just a reskinning. So there you go. Any thoughts on the announced retheme of Hansa Teutonica to a Mafia theme? I haven't heard that. That's like pretty cool because, uh, well, okay, I'm just waiting. I'm going to wait to see if you're pulling my leg first because that sounds too good to be true. Hansa Teutonica. Okay, here's here it is on Board Game Geek. It's won lots of awards. Um, new theme for Hansa Teutonica. I'm thinking of doing the new edition, they said. With some new rules. We want the Roaring Twenties or Science Fiction. Roaring Twenties is winning that contest. Oh, Special Edition. Ooh, that's really cool. See, I like Constant Satanica, but the theme was dry. But the gameplay itself was really cool with a good theme. Ooh, I'm certainly interested in that. Oh, uh, let's see. I have not played Unfair yet, guys. It's still on Kickstarter, and I usually go out of my way to not play Kickstarter games. So when it comes out for reals, I'm sure I'll play it. Um, have I gotten a chance to play the Dice Star Essentials version of Royals yet? Yes. Didn't I review that? If I didn't review it, I gave it to Z and Sam to review. But I've reviewed Royals yet. Yeah, I have it on my shelf. I definitely have a, have a copy of it. In fact, this week I'll be reviewing game number four, Speechless, um, on the channel. It'll be probably towards the end of the week. I know, the review everyone wants to see is this one here, which is uh, Star Trek Ascendancy, which I just dropped on the table, which is why I have pieces lying everywhere. That's going to take a while to sort out. I just did two mega drops of games, um, and one of them was Star Trek Ascendancy. Uh, let's see... What do you think about the upcoming Alchemist expansion? Are you excited? I honestly don't know a whole lot about it. I would want to see what it added to the game, I think. Now that you've read Pillars of the Earth, what are your thoughts on the book? Um, this person says, I personally loved it, but found a few parts unnecessarily gruesome. I think that might be where I'm at, too. There's a, there's a few characters in the book who I really 
like the characters. I like Philip and Jack. They're the two main characters. And they're obviously written to be likable. And Jack's wife, Ariana, I think her name is. Um, I like those three characters. There's some characters in there that are kind of just all bad. And there's characters that are middling bad and good. And But the main characters are mostly good, but flawed. But I, I, I like that. They, they did a good job presenting that. The book is good. It seems like it's a whole lot longer than it needed to be. <laughs> Uh, but it does a good job at presenting what life was like during that time frame. And again, I'm going to go on record saying I wouldn't want to live during that time. But um, but yes, I agree. There was a lot of scenes in the book where I think they could have just said, this happened and not gone into such exquisite detail. But this seems to be the thing that books do these days. I don't understand it. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. Brutality is, you know, it happens. I don't need to read pages and pages and pages of it. What do you hate so much about Talisman? What I dislike about Talisman is the fact that I feel like there's pretty much no choices in the game. You roll a die and then decide which direction to go. That's it. You find a monster, you flip a monster. It could be anything from a dragon to a bunny rabbit. Not a bunny rabbit, but you know what I mean. It, it's, it, it, the whole game just is very random. Have you ever played broadsides and boarding parties from the 1980s Milton Bradley series? I did not. Will you be making your way to Minneapolis-St. Paul in the near future? I don't think so. I don't have it planned. I still have not planned our schedule yet for 2017. Except, obviously, we know we're going to Gen Con. We know we're going to Essen. We know we're going to Dice Tower Con, Origins, and Gamma Trade Show. So those are the five we know we're going to for sure. Everything else is up in the air. What's the best movie you've seen this year? I'm always very confused what movies came out over the course of the year. I want to say Captain America Civil War. But I might have missed a movie. All right, I'll quick pull up a list of the best movies of 2016. Um, oh, Zootopia was really good, though. Well, I mean, and Jungle Book. I'm a huge fan of the, the Jungle Book movie. I was, that was really cool. Um, there's a lot of movies I liked. Um, yeah, so far I'm going to have to go with, uh, I guess the Captain America movie. There's a lot of these movies I haven't seen yet. Of course, I doubt any of these movies I haven't seen yet are going to really change my mind on that. All right. Well, anyhow... Do you have any recommendations for heist games? I'm looking for a museum heist game. Uh, Burgle Bros is a heist game. You could pretend it's in a museum. I think that would work. Uh, Clue the Museum Caper if you can find a copy of that one. Um... Wow. Okay. I'm really behind in questions. I'll start moving quickly here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What super dry Euro do you like the most? Um, well, Hansa Teutonica, if I'm going to say super dry Euro, that would be one of them because I feel that one's really dry. Um, but I, I'd have to do uh, sit down and really think about that one. Adam, I'm not going to answer your question, but I, I will answer it in a different way. You say, I'm a new game designer. And I'm about to, ready to take my game to publishers. Can I have your top three publishers you recommend to go to? No, because I don't know what your game is. And don't tell me. Tell other people. Um, but you need to find the publisher that will print the kind of game you're printing. There's, there's, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of great publishers out there, but they all have different things they're looking for in a game. So you need to find the publisher that matches your game. What's your favorite smash-up combo? Um, well, obviously, I like the shapeshifters, so I'll mix them with something else that I like. Shapeshifters Wizards is currently probably my favorite combo, but I have not yet mixed shapeshifters with Game of Thrones, which I think I would like to. Um, what is the one food you miss most while trying to lose weight? I don't, I don't cut any food out of my diet. I just eat less of everything. So there's no food I miss, miss, but potatoes. I love to eat a lot more potatoes for sure. How many pages is too long for a rule book? 
Very rarely do we think rule books are too long. Usually they're too short. Seems like there's a lot of 2016 games in your collection. How does 2016 compare to 2015? I prefer to hold off judgment on that until the end of the year. And even then, judgment, huh, I don't know. Now, this week I am publishing a list of my top 10 games from 2016 just because it's in the 40 years of great games. And I was like, ah, should I do that? We're in September. It's probably going to change. I know it's going to change because I already know one game that will make that list. Um, uh, but I, I haven't reviewed it yet or can talk about it. Um, but so there's probably going to be changes from S and 2 as time goes by, and that list itself might shuffle around. In fact, I think it will be. Uh, let's see here. I just started playing HeroScape. I got the Swarm of the Marrow Master set. Me and my boys love it. What would you suggest for getting more sets terrain figures? Uh, I would suggest Craigslist over... Um, Craigslist is eBay. You can go to eBay, right? But you're gonna you're fighting everyone else who's fight, finding HeroScape. And with Craigslist, you're only fighting the people in your area, and you might find it. I would look for it in thrift shops. I would do what I could to get the sets. It doesn't matter what set you get. You can use the, if if any set has terrain. Uh, I would buy like three or four more of the Marrow sets if you found them, and just because it gives you a lot of terrain. The best terrain was in the first set. Marrow has decent terrain. The superhero Marvel one has okay terrain. And the um, Dungeon Dragon one has decent terrain, but it's 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 the original, Morrow, and then the other two are, eh, you know. Um, and then there's there's extra terrain packs. If you can find one with the bridge anywhere, buy that one instantly, then sell it and buy. No, but I mean it's that's a good one. I like the jungle one. Just see what you can find. You can still find HeroScape figures at stores. That they over overproduce some of the waves. So, who cares? Just get those waves. That'd be fun for you to add stuff. Which favorite Axis and Allies nation? Russia. What are you looking forward most to at Essen? Uh, meeting people, I think. Are you bringing Codex with you to Connecticut? I'm probably bringing very few games with me to Connecticut because, just because of space. I'm going to bring a carry-on. Uh, we're trying not to bring any luggage with us. So I'll probably bring a few small games. But Codex is a pretty heavy game. Uh, so I'm probably not going to bring that. I don't know that I'm going to bring any new game. We'll see. Probably not, though. Any thoughts on the Seven Wonders Dual Expansion? I, I have not played it. Z said he saw it, played it, and enjoyed it, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, so once it comes out around Essen time, I'm sure I'll talk about it. How many masks do you own? Probably 30 at this point. And is there any you'd like to get? Oh, yeah, there's tons of masks I'd like to get. I'd like to get some more animal masks. I'd like to get a tiger mask, a lion mask, an elephant mask, a rhino mask. I like animals. I have, what do I have? I have a horse, a cardinal, a panda, uh, a gorilla, although I like to get a real good gorilla mask. Um, there's just different masks I like to get as time goes by. Tom, what's your opinion on Potion Explosion? I enjoyed it. I, I did a full review on it if you want to watch all my thoughts on it, but I thought it was a very good family game. Tom, have you played Oceanos? I have. I've only played it once, and I did not like it. However... I was really tired when I played it, so it's possible that I would like it if I played it again. I don't think I would love it. <laughs> hey, Tom, do you plan on putting up the diet exercise plan you did for your weight loss online or somewhere where we can see it? Your weight loss has inspired me, but I'm pretty stupid when it comes to it. Yeah, I, I didn't really follow any kind of plan plan. This is what I, I, I do. Every morning for breakfast, I either eat... Um, I always eat some fruit, some kind of fruit, and then I split between three different things, um, an egg, hard-boiled egg usually because that's, the, that's the, the best way to eat an egg, or a block of cheese, um, or um, some, some yogurt. So that's what I do for breakfast. For lunch, I usually almost always eat a salad of some sort, and then for supper, I eat whatever my wife makes. I just don't eat more than one plate of it, usually. And I cut desserts out almost exclusively. I eat a dessert maybe once a week. I don't drink any sugary drinks. I drink lots of water. And then I buy a whole pile of snacks from my closet of granola bars and pretzels and things so that when I'm starving, I can eat one of those and that kind of 
keeps your hunger satiated. Why is the Dice Tower called the Dice Tower? It just came to me when I was thinking of a name. This is a Dice Tower um, here. And I like the Dice Tower and I thought, hey, that kind of works uh, using a Dice Tower. And when we're also a tower, you know, a broadcasting tower. And I thought it was a cool name and it really is a good name. So that stuck. Which would you consider better, Eldritch Horror or Elder Signs with Gates of Arkham? I haven't played Elder Signs with Gates of Arkham, but Elder Sign I, I liked, but I didn't love. Eldritch Horror I loved, so probably Eldritch Horror. If you can only use one condiment for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. Because a good mesquite barbecue sauce would be a great condiment, as would a good mustard as would um, some malt vinegar. Uh, Salsa is not also a bad thing to use for the rest of your life. I'm not going to have to, I'm not going to pick between those. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. Ranch too, you know, but I don't know. How many games a week do you play with the family? I don't know. It all depends on the week. I just played some games with my kids. Uh, today's Monday, right? Yesterday we played, what did we play? Uh, Super Vampire. And top that. Super Vampire was good, but top that is great. I should be reviewing that in a few weeks. Both of them, actually. Any idea where Cry Havoc is going to show up in your top 100? I actually know exactly where it's going to show up. But I'm going to have to ask you to wait for that because it's coming soon. Would you recommend play Time Stories with three or four players? I've only played it with three and I'm really happy with three. Can you think of any games that come with soundtracks? We love how much it adds to the theme. We have Fortune and Glory and just got Tokaido Deluxe for my birthday. I don't know what the soundtrack's like in Tokaido Deluxe. Um, the soundtracks for uh, Fortune and Glory, I haven't heard that one in particular, but I have heard a lot of the soundtracks that come with the Flying Frog games, and I'm not a very big fan of them. They just, they're just not that good in my opinion. So I just, there's like so much music online, I can just find a soundtrack. I feel like hotels near the Columbus Convention Center for Origins have sold out incredibly quickly compared to past years. Any comment? Do you think Origins will be huge this year? I don't think Origins will be huge, but I do think it will be bigger. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Just watch some of the Dice Tower's older shows out of curiosity. Are Z's parents Chinese? Is he mixed or adopted? No, that's just a joke that doesn't ever die. That's all. Z is Cuban. Keyline Pie Factory, that sounds awesome. It's more awesome than you know. Okay? So there's actually like several of these stores down in the Keys. There's two in Key Largo. There's definitely one in Key West. And I think the one in Key West has a branch in Key Largo. I'm not really sure which is which. But they have Key Lime Pie. Okay? Which is great. Um, sometimes they have multiple Key Lime Pie, but usually just one or two flavors of Key Lime Pie. But it's great. Um, and there's all different kinds of key lime pies all scattered throughout the keys. Some have meringue, some have whipped cream, some have chocolate drizzled on them. That's the kind I got this time. But they also sell frozen key lime on a stick. Cho it's covered in chocolate, a slice of key lime on a stick covered in chocolate, which is pretty amazing. They also sell key lime hot sauce, key lime tea, key lime salsa, key lime um, rub for your thing, key lime cookies, key lime candy. I mean... You name it, there's a key lime something in the store. Now, I highly recommend the key lime cookies. I mean, they're amazing. Um, and the key lime pie, of course. And the key lime hot sauce, I, I usually try to keep one bottle at home somewhere because it's a good, it's not too hot, it's just an excellent sauce. Let's see. Uh would you ever consider doing a series on best games about certain countries or continents, like best games themed in France, China, England? Probably not. I just feel like that'd be a lot of work to hunt down all the games in a specific country. Um, if you could only have one game for a large group, would you get Captain Sonar or Dead Last? Well, I think Dead Last goes to 10 players, maybe? So, I mean, that would kind of change that. Um, I have both, frankly, in my collection. And there's also a big price point difference there, too. So it depends what you're looking for. I'm confused about what makes a game an Ameritrash game and where did that name originate from. Oh, it came on the internet on Board Game Geek. 
Um, it basically means a game where you are going after other players. There's no hard set rule, but they're usually very thematic. The theme comes tied to the mechanisms. You're usually attacking other players in some sort of fashion, and you can stab people in the back and that sort of deal. Um, the Ameritrash name is never one I really liked. We say Amerith I usually say Amerithrash on our show, but I don't really care. It's, it is what it is, um, but that's what that, that came from. How's Mansion of the Madness one-player mega campaign going? It's been on hold for a while. I do need to get back and finish that up. Um, maybe I lost and need to start over, too. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Tom, do you think it's important to make the distinction between games and activities? And do you think a game isn't a game if it doesn't have a winner or loser at the end? I don't really get too caught up in these things. Um, I, I do distinguish sometimes if something's like a game or activity. A good example would be concept, right? Concept has a game in a box, but we never play it. We just play concept till it's over. We're just playing. There's rules in it, but we're just kind of having a fun time. Um, so sometimes I'll say those, those kind of games are activities. We don't really care if someone wins or loses. We're just playing to play the game. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of party games that that fits into. If it doesn't have a winner or loser at the end, is it a game? No, I would consider it an activity. I don't really care that much about the distinction. I just make it so people know. Why did none of you include Dixit or Looney Quest in top 10 unique games? I'm imagining you shaking your fist there. Um, mostly because there's so many games out there, okay? Looney Quest is not actually that, that unique because uh, there's a... Uh, uh, Doodle Quest <laughs> is pretty much the... Uh, the same, same kind of concept, so it's not that unique. Um, Dixit is an interesting idea, but there's a lot of other games that have some similarities to it. The card artwork is the most unique thing. The fact is, is that when I made my list of 10 unique games, and then Z mentioned some, and I was like, oh, wow, I could have put some of those in. As time went by, people mentioned other games. I'm like, oh, man, I should have put that in there, too. There's a lot of really cool, unique games out there. Smash up, should I buy the big geeky box or just buy an insert company card holder? I'd probably get the big geeky box. My biggest problem with the big geeky box is that it doesn't hold the rules very well. I have to I have to like roll them up and stick them in one of the slots. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm getting married in eleven days. We plan on going to Essen next year as part of our one year anniversary. It'll be our first convention. Any advice? Do you both want to go? <laughs> I don't know that I'd take my wife to a convention for our anniversary. Um, yeah, just go and have fun, really. Just go in, look around. I'd read up on it ahead of time. Don't worry. Just go have fun, play games. There's so much, really. There's a lot of... I would look online on Board Game Geek. There's a kind of thing that's... I think it's called like Essen. What's that all about? There's some thread like that. I'd hunt that down. There's a lot of useful, very helpful information there. Um, what will be the consequences of the Asmodee Games Workshop divorce? Do you think we'll see a Forbidden Star rethemed edition? I don't think we're going to see any immediate consequences from this. I could be wrong. I think the fact that they are making uh, Rune Wars is a big thing. I think that they had that plan for a while. They knew this was coming, I'm sure, a long time ago. And so they're making a direct competitor now to Games Workshop. Now, whether that was the cause of the split or anything, I have no idea. You know, what caused them to split? They probably just didn't see eye to eye, and Games Workshop has been making a lot more board games. Now, their board games are mostly just showcases for their miniatures at this point in time. Um, but still, you know, we'll see. As time goes by, I, I will Fantasy Flight take some of those games and remake them in other universes? It's possible. But some of them I don't think would sell so well. Do you think Forbidden Stars would sell well, let's say, if it was in the, in the Twilight Imperium universe? I don't know that it would. Any thoughts on Citadel 2nd Edition? I don't have it. Do I think it will fire Libertalia or Mission Red Planet for you? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think Citadel's... It's going to be Citadel still, just with some new characters. My only gripe with Star Trek Ascendancy was that they could have included two types of ship minis, like Enterprise A and D, and you start with older ships and start working towards building the better one. I guess. I don't know that that would have made a big difference. I actually like the miniatures in the game a lot. 
Uh, let's see here. I live in Massachusetts and I'm toying with going down a portal this weekend, but I'd be most likely going alone and I'm frankly a bit intimidated as I've just gotten into the hobby. Well, I think you should go. I mean, I find that people at these events are usually welcoming and friendly. Um, if nothing else, we're going to do a live show that you could watch, a game show that you can get involved with. Um, and then make sure you come by and say hi to us. There's a chance you'll play a game with us. We're going to try to split up to play games. But there's also the, the chance that, uh, that you'll meet some other people who really love games. And so I, I know there's a lot of gaming space there. So I, I, would, I mean, as long as it's, if it was two hours or less, I would go. That would be my limit. Um, do you think you, Sam or Z, could come up with a top rule move games? Yes, I've already done a top 10 list, I'm pretty sure, on the podcast, but that is on my list of games to do at some point in time. Um, do you know if there will be an upgrade kit for those of us who have matched the Madness 1st Edition to the 2nd Edition? It is an upgrade kit. When you buy it, you can then use all your stuff from the 1st Edition in the 2nd Edition. It's not like there's, there's, there's the same stuff. It's different stuff, and then you can bring in all your 1st Edition stuff, too. Um... Have you seen Stranger Things on Netflix? Yes, I have. I really did enjoy it. Um, uh, there's a lot of questions I'm skipping because I, I try not to answer the same questions all the time. And so some questions I may have been asked in previous Q&As, like last week or the week before or the week before or the week before. If I haven't been asked for it in a while, I will answer it. But don't feel upset if I skip your question. I'll get to it at some point. Uh, let's see... Jungle Book is better than Captain America. Well, possibly. It was very good. Uh, what's, who's your favorite character to play in Battlestar Galactica? Tom. Tom, uh, what was his name? The guy who used to be Apollo, the, the actor, and then became the... Vice President, right? Oh, I forget all that he did. They broke him out from prison. He became a pretty major character for a while. His name was Tom, though, right? I really liked him. Well, until the last several episodes where I feel like they, they changed his character more than slightly. Uh, what's your favorite hotel to stay at when traveling? I like staying at any resort. If I ever get a chance to stay at a resort, like the hotel that the um, that the Dice Tower Con was at this year, the Creep Royale was amazing. The Nickelodeon Hotel in Orlando, we've stayed there before. It's great. We stayed at the one of the Universal resorts. We usually can't stay at those, okay? We usually stay at like Dinko hotels, and they're fine. But uh, sometimes it's nice to stay at a really nice hotel. Uh, when I'm traveling out and about, I don't really care. Um, I I just I usually care more about location more than anything else, but some hotels are better than others. Um, but as I go through the different cities, to different conventions, I'm usually more concerned about where it is and uh, how close it is to the convention center. What are your thoughts on the very funny randomish cards of Deadpool expansion for Marvel Legendary? I didn't know that what expansion was out yet. I'm just reviewing Civil War this week, actually, which is actually a really good expansion. Any word in expansion for Roll for the Galaxy? Well, it came out already um, and had some more dice. You mean another expansion? I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know that you're saying here, I feel like they left it in dust unsupported, unlike race. I don't know that the game needs that much expansion stuff. It's a fine game as is. 
You did a review for Codex, the deluxe version. Do you think the core set with just two colors is worth buying now or wait for more colors to come out? I would definitely get the core set with two colors. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Um, but you can get the core set, then you'll be able to buy the other colors as time goes by. That's what they told me. When does voting usually open for the People's Choice Top 100? It's open right now. I need to send out actually another tweet, Facebook post, reminding people of that. Uh, but you can go vote on that now. Many, many, many people have voted already. And so once I'll be shutting those videos down, probably right after Essen, we'll start posting to People's Choice Top 100 of all time. What are your thoughts on games that you sense? You mentioned one last week, and there was one mentioned on breakfast this morning. That's right, Barry Dublé took a look at another one. Seems like it's limited and will wear out in time. Probably, but it's a gimmick that's got me intrigued. Uh, let's see. What collector's anniversary edition of a game do you like most? Probably Small World. That's just an amazing production. Um, you know that First Martians, several people have talked about First Martians. First Martians is actually delayed till next year. I talked to Ignacy about it. I told him I was super excited. I couldn't wait to see it. And he said the game's a beast and they, want to, they need to get it finished and stuff. So it's, we're not going to see it until next year, unfortunately. Which is okay. Because I'd rather it be a good game, an amazing game, than have them rush it through production. Um, what's the first board game you remember playing? The first board game I remember playing is either Monopoly or Life, probably. Uh, let's see. Does someone at the Dice Tower speak any Spanish? Well, Z is fluent in Spanish, so that's at least one. There's a lot of uh, speculation and talk about the game that I, I the, you know, I talked about this game that was coming out. Uh, we will be reviewing that game next week. Uh, the company may change their mind and let us review it early, but I, I, I doubt it. So it's going to be reviewed next Monday. You can look for that review. And that's all I'm going to say. And that's all I got to say about that. Um... Of your 2015 Top 100, which game do you play least year to year? How many plays do you get of it per year? I don't actually understand that question. I think you're saying, is there any game in my Top 100 that I don't play as much as the others? Well, definitely. Let's just look at this logistically. So I have 100 games in my Top 100. Do I play all 100 of those every year? Especially with the fact that I'm playing another 500 new games each year? And the fact is, no. Not every game gets played every year. It just is the way it happens. Um, does that mean it drops out of my top 100? Sometimes it could, but not always. So, just don't have time to play all the games. Um, how many lines of ketchup do you put on your hot dog, sir? Ketchup does not belong on a hot dog, ever. Ketchup has very few uses, honestly. It's like sugar cat tomato stuff. You should always use barbecue sauce or salsa or hot sauce or sriracha or something. Ketchup is a last resort condiment. It is acceptable sometimes on hamburgers, although barbecue sauce is better anyway. And it is acceptable on meatloaf. Um, I'm trying to think where else ketchup is acceptable. You might be saying, what about fries? Come on, there's so many other better sauces for fries. Ketchup, but on a hot dog, never. I haven't put ketchup on a hot dog. I can't even remember the last time I did it. I was definitely an uneducated child at the time. What's a good thing to put on a hot dog? Well, I mean, a good Chicago hot dog is a good setup. Uh, that's a good combo. A kraut dog, a chili dog, a chili cheese dog, or just a plain mustard and onions dog. No ketchup. If Kuban Hot gives you your own custom Blood Rage clan, what would it be? I have no desire for my own clan. I'm pretty happy with the clans that exist already.
Why are you not doing Tom versus the Internet anymore? Oh, I'll probably do some of those in the future. It just that there needs to be a period of time where I have some free time to get those done. Uh, right now, we are really striving hard. You'll notice I'm doing about 14 board game reviews a week, which is really taxing my limits. Now, when this portal thing is done, I may have it. Like I said, though, the live stuff, um, the Tom vs. the Internet stuff works. There's only so many games that that can work with, though, because there's a delay, a limited delay of the Internet going back and forth. So we might do some more. We'll see. If given the opportunity, would you like to see a Dice Tower faction in Smash Up? I would not. Um, how far from home were you willing to go to play one game at Cosmic Encounter? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't go to play any game. I go to a gaming event. The, if I'm, the longer I go, the longer I better be there. Like, I go to cool stuff up in Hollywood. That takes me about an hour to get up there. But then when I go there, I'm usually there for 10 hours gaming. So I don't mind the hour there and the hour back. If I was going to go two hours somewhere, there better be 10 hours gaming, like I said. Um, never, I don't think I would go that far just for one game. Why did Predator not make anyone's list for top 10 unique games? Because we hate it and we don't like you either. No, I mean, come on. This always boggles my mind when people ask questions like this. Because there's about a thousand unique games out there, so it just didn't make it. First of all, Sam's never played it, and Z's never played it. I'm the only one who's played it, so I'm the only one who has a chance to put it on my list. But the game itself is not that unique. Now, the theme is unique, but the game itself is very similar to many other worker placement games. It's a good game. There's a lot of cool concepts in it. But if, if I played this game and sat down in front of you, you'd think Vlada Schwarzel designed the game because it feels like one of his games. It's certainly not unique in that regard. But, but I apologize for not putting it on my list. Um, have you ever played a game where you or someone really lost their temper? Oh, many times. Um, not recently, though, but it's happened. Tom, what do you think a designer needs to do to make a successful, expandable card game with such a saturated market? I have no idea. I'm, when I hear that something's going to be an expandable card game, I'm usually not that interested in it because I don't want to have to put the effort into keeping up with it. I like games that come out with expansions, but when they come out with this planned expandable card line, like Fantasy Flight, anytime they announce one nowadays, I'm like, oh. All right, well, we play the very beginning of it, maybe. I don't want to talk about the dolphins. <laughs> um, how do I get out of print games? Well, go to Board Game Geek. They have a good um, secondary market there. Or go to eBay and look for eBay or go to conventions. Other than that, you're just going to have to look. But eBay is usually a good spot. Just put a search in and save it for the name of the game that you're looking for. And when one pops up there, you'll get a notice. Um, I unfortunately can't make it to Portal this weekend. Is there plans to make this sort of thing a yearly thing? Probably not. Um, not that I mean Portal in a, a sense, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to go to different little conventions. Like last year we went to... Um, yeah, I can't even remember the name of it now. Grand Con. Grand Con. And that was, a, that was fun to go to that one, but we're not going this year because we're kind of like trying to stagger the little conventions. Now, Z and Sam just did go to West Texas Tabletop twice in a row. They brought them in. They were willing to do it. So it could happen, and it worked out in the schedules that it, they were able to go. Um, but um, I wouldn't expect that that would happen all the time. Tom Zarek. That was the guy's name from Battlestar Galactica. Richard Hatch is the character who played him. Um, Pandemic Legacy or Risk Legacy? I like Pandemic Legacy better. Why have you not put your life on hold to play Seafall? <laughs> you know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we play a game of it next week because a, a new mechanism, which we just discovered, is really, I'm just really jonesing to try it out, right? Um, the, the problem that we're running into is that 
one of the four players hates it. Hates the game. Um, and mostly it's because every time he's about to get something that can carry over to the next game, someone scoops him on it or someone ends the game before he can get it. And I can certainly understand that. That's a very frustrating thing. Um, and then for the rest of us, I mean, it, it's also a very long game. Someone said, it's not a long game. It's definitely a long game. And each, each game, they're trying to make it longer because the points you need to win in the game goes up by one every game. So we're up to like 15 points, I think, for the next game that we're going to play of it. Now, there may be ways to get points that we don't know about yet. Um, before you started Dice Tower, how did you manage your time between trying to get some game time in and family and work schedule? I seem to struggle a lot getting time to game with friends. I just did it. I just scheduled my time. I just would say, okay, this is what I'm doing this night, and then this night I'm not gaming, and, you know, worked it out that way. I don't know how to explain it. I just... I just scheduled everything. Tom, are we going to see any future reviews for Star Wars Armada, as you stated? Are you still getting stuff for it playing it? Yes and yes and yes to all those questions. I just can't tell you when. Um, when will Z be reviewing the other Seven Sins? I don't know. When, when he gets around to it. There's a lot of games we have to do. What's your favorite Twilight Imperium species to play? I don't remember the name of them, but the guys whose cruisers can shoot before the, uh, before the battle begins. They get one shot. But I'm pretty much willing to play any of the factions. I like all of them. They have all cool ideas. Barbecue sauce has ketchup in it. It's a key ingredient. I know, but it's more than ketchup. It's, it makes ketchup weep. Weep with sadness. Have you seen a new version of Robinson Crusoe from Portal Games? I have. It looks very, very nice. I'm sure it's good. Um, have you considered going vegetarian or vegan? Um, no, I've never considered that. And I have no problem with people who are vegetarian or vegan, but I really, really, really like meat. I can't emphasize how much I like meat. Now, the doctor told me, to cut back on meat, and uh, we'll see what he says soon. I, I went for my 40th checkup last week, um, and then this, which was an entertaining thing in of itself, mostly because of that earplug in my ear, um, but they, I just went in this morning for blood tests. I hardly ever go to the doctor, so this, was, this is all new for me. I think they're like, so when's the last time you were here? I was like, um, uh, like, so what was the name of the last doctor? And I was like, uh, some guy in Korea. That's what I wrote on the form. I don't fool around on forms anymore. If I can't think of something I write, I have no idea. Um, and just write silly stuff. If you can make the people laugh, maybe. But anyhow, as I took the blood test today and I have a follow-up appointment in a couple weeks, we'll find out if I'm okay. Then the doctor will say, you can't eat meat. And you know what? If the doctor said that, I wouldn't eat meat. But unless the doctor says that, I'm going to eat meat. Now, I prefer some meats over others. Like I'm, I like red meat, but I'm not a huge red meat guy. I really like chicken. And I like fish, but chicken and shrimp. Mwah. Sausage. I also love sausage. What order do you like the Star Wars films from best to least? All right, you ready? My favorite, by a mile, episode six, Return of the Jedi. Love Return of the Jedi. I know everyone always talks in how much they hate Return of the Jedi, but I really, really like Return of the Jedi. Uh, second would probably be seven, maybe. Seven was pretty good. Um, then third would be maybe episode one or, uh, I don't know. I really like episode three too. I'll say episode three. There are, don't get me wrong. There's parts of episode three I don't like, but there's parts of all the movies that I don't like, you know, in, in general. So we'll just do that to be controversial. So we'll say six, seven, three, one, two, four, five. Oh, wait, I'm getting these all mixed up. Hang on. Let me try it again. Let me do this right. Six, seven, three, four, five, one, two. Two is definitely my least favorite. I think I did that right. Um, have you considered a top 10 games with bad timing? 
Games that would have done better if a game with similar theme or mechanic hadn't come out similarly, like Castaways and The Shadow of Robinson Crusoe. That's actually a very clever idea. Um, I'd have to sit and think about it for a really long time. But there are definitely games that came out and you're like, ah! It came out the wrong year. It's kind of like movies, right? Armageddon and Deep Impact. Deep Impact, which is a far superior movie to Armageddon, did not get the love it would have gotten normally because it just came out the same time. Um, let's see here. Tom, if after this session you could play any game, what would it be? Length, not an issue. I, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, if, right now, the game's the most Jones to play again is Feast for Odin. I just keep wanting to play it. Although, I'm really anxious. There's always these new games, right? So that uh, the Master of Orion board game, I'm very pumped to get that to the table. I got a game coming from Eagle tomorrow, which is the space version of Age of Empires. I'm very anxious to play that. And there's a couple other games that I got them downstairs that I'm really excited to try out also. Have you played any other Japanese RPGs other than Final Fantasy? Not really. I did play um, Dragon Quest, one of them. It was on the PlayStation 2, maybe? It, well, you ran around and you got monsters to join you when... You had like a, a group of three monsters who would fight with you and you could go and hunt and find monsters and get them to join you. And I really, really liked this game. It was a lot of fun. It had, uh, it gave me a very strong uh, open world feeling and I thought that that was very, very entertaining. If they ever come out with that one for the, uh, uh, the iPad, I'm all over it. Um, yes, 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 of course, I'm going to start, we're going to start hearing all the, how much people hate the original prequels. Um, I, I just didn't think they were as bad as people said. Sure, the love story stuff was garbage, but the, the pod race was super fun to watch. The, the, the lightsaber duel between Darth Maul and the Jedis was really entertaining. Even that whole fight in the arena and, 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 in episode two, which I did not really like, um, episode 2 as much as the rest of them, but I like the fight in the arena. You take out C-3PO. I liked a lot of that. I liked uh, a lot of the stuff in 3. I know some people want to talk about how awful these movies are, but you know what? I enjoyed them. I watched them all, my kids, and they didn't say that they liked the new ones better than the old ones or the old ones better than the new ones. They liked them all. But I know. It's the cool thing to do. Um... Given how long you spent in South Korea, how fluent did you become? Not at all, really. I learned words and phrases and things like that. But I worked so much with, I was teaching English. And to teach in English, we were immersing them into English. And South Korea is extremely welcoming and friendly. All the signs are in half in English. People try to speak English to all the time. So it, you have to go out of your way to learn Korean, really. Um, and then once I started working with military, American military and stuff, I just was around English most of the time. What theme do you like better, Vikings or Pirates? Probably Pirates. What five Cosmic Encounter species would you recommend for a beginner's five-player game? I wouldn't recommend any, but here's what you can do. You can go through the box, and at the top of each Cosmic Encounter alien, there's a green, red, or yellow light there. Just go through and find the green light aliens and take those and shuffle them again there, buddy. It makes it really easy. Also, rip up the machine alien. Feast for Odin replacing Fields of Arl. Well, I didn't already. I already have gotten rid of Fields of Arl. I think it's really good, but it was limited by the fact it was two player. Um, but I, now that I've I played Feast for Odin, yes, I think it's better than Fields for Arl. Also, can handle more than two players. Um, what game that you own has the most custom modifications? That includes paint, storage solutions, inserts, etc. Okay, well, let's see. I, I've been thinking about this one actually. Power Grid. I've definitely changed. A lot in Power Grid. I've upgraded all the components, all of them. I have added um, custom money cards in there. Puerto Rico and Marco Polo are pretty upgraded, both with inserts and other things like that. And um, I've upgraded Scythe to some degree. So those are the different things that I have um, to upgrade it. All right, we're almost done. So I'm going to take just two more questions and then we'll end here. What is your ultimate favorite childhood cartoon? G.I. Joe, for sure, as a child. Um, 
It was it was a close one. Transformers was behind that. Um, and should I get a new video of Jimmy for the component section of Board Game Breakfast? Well, he's he's no longer a baby, so Dice Dice Baby wouldn't make sense. So I feel like I should keep the video of him being a baby. Now it would be Dice Dice Toddler. Oh, he's not even a toddler. He's a little man. Dice Dice Little Man. Um, all right. Well, folks. I got some recording of some shows to do tonight, uh, I mean, of some uh, games that need to get reviewed. We still have a lot of reviewing to get done because we only have the rest of today, tomorrow and Wednesday, and then we go to Connecticut on Thursday. So we're looking forward to that. So anywho, um, until next time, I'm Tom Basil. You've been watching live q and I'll see you guys, well, probably tomorrow on some videos and stuff. So see you then. So... Thank you for watching <laughs> Tower. Um. <laughs> Yay!